welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet that you can find an uncensored version of me. Hello, I am Rachel, and this is my podcast. We are having another solo episode today, so deal with it. I do have Blaze Boy behind me, though. Say hi, Blaze Boy. Oh, I forgot to take his collar off. Hold on one second. Because if I don't, you're just gonna make noise with it. Yes, you are. And naked. My dog's naked, y'all. Don't be perverts. Relax. It's a dog. All right. What is what is today? What is happening? To, is it? Oh, it's the 20th. Oh, I forgot to look up holidays. <sighs> Excuse me. Apparently, it's pay back your parents day. Um, no, I'm good. It was their choice to have me. Not mine. <laughs> it is also transgender day of remembrance. That's a good one. Universal Children's Day. Okay, if you like kids. And Black Consciousness Day, another good one. Botox Cosmetic Day. Why does Botox have a day? Excuse me. We have like pay back your parents, transgender awareness, black consciousness, Botox. (laughs) I don't understand. Also, how do they decide what day is what with things like this? Is it the day Botox got made? Why are we having a day about it? I don't understand. Man, there's a lot. International Hug a Runner Day? Someone, someone please tell me why there's an International Hug a Runner Day. Good for you guys. If you can run and you enjoy that, power to you. I'm impressed. Good work. Seems like a sweaty hug. It's also name your PC day. Like your computer? No. People name their PC. I know people name their cars. But name your PC? My God, there's so much. National Absurdity Day. I these are people, someone's just making these up and putting them on this website at this point. National Peanut Butter Fudge Day. Are there other flavors of fudge that have a day? It's Revolution Day in Mexico. Guys, I think that holidays are getting a little out of control. There were obviously some good ones in there, but some that just don't make any sense to me. Why do they why? How? Can I just declare something a holiday and then it just is? What's the process of that? How do you declare something a holiday? I know there's federal holidays and those are a big deal. And then we got our religious holidays. But how do you go about being like, it's National Sparkle Water Day. I declare it. It is so. Who's declaring things? Can I do it? That seems important. No, that's too much pressure. I don't want to do it. Anyway. Hello. I thought we should start off with letting you know what you're supposed to be celebrating today. And also, I needed to start off by genuinely applaud applauded by Yeah. Yep. I needed to start off today by genuinely apologizing for the clickbait last week. Except I didn't clickbait because we pretend married so that Joy and I could do the newlywed challenge. So I also said in it that that's what I was doing. It's a little click clickbaity. <laughs> Sorry. I barely ever do clickbait. I have done it. I'm never, I'm not completely, is it Scott or Scotch free? Scott free? Scotch free? I don't know what the phrase is. We're looking it up because why not? Scott free. It is Scott. In medieval England, there was a tax called Scott spelled with one T. And if someone was able to avoid paying it, they would get off Scott free. And over 800 years later, we still use the expression when someone gets away with something without being punished or penalized. What was I talking about? How did I get to this? Oh, I'm filming this on a Friday and I have Friday brain rot. We are only supposed to, I could potentially make my own life a four day work week, but my friends are working on Friday. So I'm like, I might as well also work on a Friday. Anyway, you know what? It doesn't matter. (laughs) Let's read what pisses me off this week. (laughs) Guys, my brain's everywhere but here. How's everybody doing? Okay. We are going to read number 68 from my book of 101 Things That Piss Me Off. Here we go. You know what pisses me off? What, Rachel? Recommended serving sizes. You know what? This still gets in my craw. This still puts my panties in a bunch. Here it is. Why are the recommended serving sizes so ridiculously small? We all know that we aren't stopping at three cookies or 10 chips. When I glance at the nutritional facts, they seem not half bad. And then I realize 
The recommended serving size for that frosting is one teaspoon. Come on. In what world does someone use one teaspoon of frosting? And then I actually took a picture of a can of frosting that says 25 calories, one gram of fat, five grams of sodium, three grams of sugar, but it is literally one teaspoon is the serving size. That's ridiculous. I still think that's so fu- No one's stopping at two Oreos. No, that's, that's not a thing. All the cookie things are like, one serving is two cookies. On chips, it's always like 17 chips. No, not that you're supposed to be counting your calories anyway. Well, some people need to count certain things for like if you have diabetes or high sodium or you're watching your cholesterol or whatever, you do have to look at the nutritional facts. But still, you're like, man, maybe I shouldn't be consuming so much sugar. How much is in this? Oh, it's just like one gram. And it's like for a half of a bite. (laughs) No, it's dumb. It's dumb. All right. This week, since it's a solo, I'm going to try and make it only a 30 minute episode. So uh, let's get in to what we're doing, which is reading, Am I the Assholes? We haven't done it in a beat. Some people say they like it. Some people hate it. I can't. It is. I have been on the, here I am, thoughts. I've been on the internet a really long time. And I can tell you for a fact, there is no way to please everyone at once. You can try to appease the masses. You really can. But then sometimes you think you've done it. And everyone gets really mad about something completely unrelated or you thought like, you just don't understand what's going to come. You never really know what the Internet. So I can't please all of you. Some people like solo episodes. Some people hate it. Some people like Am I the Assholes? Some people hate it. What am I supposed to do? So I just do a mixture of everything. Here we go. First one up. Am I? It was a long one. Hold on to your tuchus. Am I the asshole for asking my coworker not to eat her cultural food? in the break room immediately sounds slightly racist but don't want to knock it till we read into it i know how the title sounds oh okay good they know that they sound a little racist good and i'm sure as you begin reading this post it'll sound worse but please hear me out okay who thinks i'm gonna be able to hold my tongue through this not me let's go i a 25 year old female have a wonderful co-worker, a 54-year-old female who I get along with really well. Will we well? They didn't, they didn't write it will we well. I read it as will we well. This co-worker is Nepalese. Please, for the love of God, someone tell me if I said that right. Nepalese from Naples. Nepal? Nepal? Okay. Nep- I said it right. And I am a white woman. In the past, she's been kind enough to bring in different food from her culture for all of us to try. I have had zero problems with her or anyone else bringing in food from their culture. And I've really enjoyed some of the dishes and sweets she's brought in, especially the barfi, the, the bear, barfi, B-A-R-F-I, barfi, bar, barfi, guys, I don't, I have to look it up. Burfi, an Indian confection made from milk solids and sugar and typically flavored with cardamom or nuts. Okay, Uh, I'm going to say burfi. So she's enjoyed some of the food. Got it. So far I'm reading, I'm not racist because I eat their food. (laughs) My workplace has lots of different cultures and I usually don't care what anyone else brings to lunch at least until this situation. Yeah, you shouldn't be caring what other people eat because that's their business. But she said, hear her out. So we'll hear her out. A couple of weeks ago, I noticed a horrible smell in the break room that was incredibly strong. It was kind of like if you farted into a sweaty sock and stuck it in your face. Oh my God. (laughs) It was honestly inescapable within the room. Even after I changed the rubbish bin, I didn't know what it was, but ended up going outside and eating in my car. I figured it was just a one-off, but for every few days, I'd smell it again. I genuinely had no idea where it was coming from. During this time, I just ate outside the building or in my car. Okay, so she brought in some stinky food. However, one day I walked in and it it was somehow even stronger. This day happened to be the day I had the same break as Jane. Oh, we've dropped a name. Okay. 
I noticed she was eating a fruit and realized that's where the smell was coming from. I asked her what she was eating and she told me it was called a, a, a durian. Hold on. I think that's how it's spelled. She said, oh yeah, a, a durian. An oval, spiny, tropical fruit containing a creamy pulp. Despite its fetid smell. What's a fetid? It is easily esteemed for its flavor. Okay. I looked up what it was. A durian is a tropical fruit, and it says here in the definition, it has a foul odor, but it's really good tasting wise. She had only recently found a good market for them. I said she was, I was glad she was enjoying it, but mentioned that the smell was quite overpowering and left the room smelling afterwards. I asked if she wouldn't mind eating it at home or outside as the smell really lingered in the staff room. She said she never really noticed the smell, but would do her best to do so. She seemed a bit annoyed, but hasn't brought it back to the break room since. Okay. Cutesies. I was talking with a friend about this, also white, and she said I was behaving in a racist way towards my coworker, and it was wrong to police her cultural food. I argued that it wasn't a cultural thing, and I would have done the same if someone was microwaving fish or another smelly food. This has caused a debate between us about if what I did was offensive, And while I do still think I was right, I'm beginning to question if I could be viewed as in the wrong. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Okay, before I read the comments, you made it seem like it was about race. If you had not mentioned anyone's race, I would have never thought this was about race. This is (laughs) like you went real hard on. I am not racist, which I get. I completely understand. But I think that there are certain rules There are unwritten social etiquettes, uh, such as, yeah, no microwaving fish in the microwave. Like That was going to be something I had mentioned as I was reading this. Uh, Just super smelly stuff. You're allowed to do whatever you want unless there are rules. Oh, my SD card's full. One second. Uh, Let's go to the sponsor. Sponsor, sponsor. ZocDoc. ZocDoc is our sponsor for today. Being an adult definitely has its high points. You can eat whatever you want when you want. You can go to bed whenever you want and however you want, but there's definitely some low points. Like you have to do taxes and you have to figure out what's for dinner every single night for the rest of your life. You even have to make your own doctor's appointments. But for that one, there is ZocDoc, the healthcare app that makes being an adult just a little bit easier. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare high quality in-network doctors, choose the one that's right for your needs and click to instantly book an appointment. We're talking about in-network appointments with more than 100,000 healthcare providers across every specialty from mental health to dental health, eye care to skin care and much, much more. Plus, ZocDoc appointments happen fast, typically within 24 to 72 hours of booking. You can even score some same-day appointments. So stop putting off those doctor's appointments and go to ZocDoc.com slash Rachel to find and instantly book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Rachel. ZocDoc.com slash Rachel. We're back. Sorry about that. I thought I had cleaned out this SD card. I don't know what was wrong with me. Hello, and we're back. Okay, I don't think... It's completely out of line to be like, hey, that stinks up the room. Do you mind eating it elsewhere? But I also don't think that person has to unless it's the rules of the break room to not have overly smelly food. I want to read what the comments say. Uh, Let's get into this. Not the asshole because it's a durian. Everyone everywhere who eats a durian knows it smells like ass. Her fanging innocence is infuriating this cultural food is banned on public transit in some of southeast asian countries because the smell is very known it is literally famously smells awful what okay and then the op said i actually didn't know it didn't know it was so well known i nor my friend had ever heard of it but i'm quite sheltered when it comes to food i've heard of a durian before I actually think Abby and I have had it before together because we like to try different fruits that we find. Someone said, yeah, this reads as fake. Everyone who eats durian knows it stinks. No one can just casually eat it at lunch, too. That's a good that's a good one. OP. Um, Everyone is saying this now. Everyone's saying this post is fake. But OP saying, yeah, it's definitely not. Um, Okay, well, 
I don't know. I didn't get fake from this. Her like going strong and I am not racist really led me to believe that this wasn't a fake post. Someone said, you're not being racist. Durian is world famous for its odor. Even countries where it's commonly eaten have rules and restrictions on when slash where you can consume it because it smells so bad. Yeah, everyone's saying not the asshole. You don't stink up the staff room. If it's not a rule, she can keep doing it. But it's just a social norm to... No, it's not a norm. It's a social etiquette to not do something like that. So not the asshole. And, but a lot of people are saying, I don't believe this happened. I didn't think it was that fake. I don't know. People are saying it's not real. Does it matter? I don't think it matters. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> On to the next one. Am I the asshole for rebuking a friend after she referred to my girlfriend as the quote unquote token Asian leading to an awkward situation? There's a lot of race ones today. Here we go. My girlfriend is not from the same town as me. She recently moved here. Her and I have been dating for a few years, but she is a shy, introverted girl and a bit socially awkward. Oh, okay. We live in a Western country, so she's kind of living between two cultures because she's East Asian. Anyway, I have some female friends and I thought I could set her up with them and they could go on girl dates and she could finally have some female friends here to hang out with rather than just me. My girlfriend liked the idea and my friends were also keen to get to know her. They met up for the first time and were planning stuff when one of the girls jokingly referred to my girlfriend as the quote unquote token Asian. They're all stereotypical white girls, as basic and stereotypical white as you can get. And it just felt so unnecessary and offensive to me. My girlfriend laughed it off, but I got angry and told them off and demanded they apologize to her. The whole situation got very awkward and now the entire plans are canceled. My girlfriend thinks I overreacted and I ruined her chance to make friends. Well, I think, I personally think it's up to your girlfriend to decide what's offensive towards her or not. Um, it's very, it would be very amazing of you to be like, the polar side was like, was that offensive to you? Do you need me to say something? And like stand up for her in that way. But I think blowing up when she didn't care is m maybe not the best I understand you're trying. I love that you're trying to protect her and that you don't like racism. Yes. Keep on that track. But also maybe check in with your girlfriend before blowing up because she might. I don't know. I don't know her. I don't know her sense of humor, but she might be fine with that. Um, let's let's read in here. Not the asshole. As someone who's been called the token black girl for years, I took a, mon of, a ton of microaggressions for years and never said anything just to have friends. I was shy and insecure and didn't want to make waves, but the fact is comments like that aren't really cool, joking or not. My race is not a joke. Being a token anything isn't something funny. No, it's not by any means. And OP said, um, exactly. This is what I feel it is. She just accepted a blatant racist comment and chose to let it slide because she wanted to be their friend and didn't want to make a scene. But the way I interpreted it, they were basically saying, you are not one of us. You will never be one of us. Even if you hang out with us, you will still not be one of us. You will always be different purely on the basis of a race. I knew exactly what they meant. And then someone said, that's crazy how fine they were with saying it the first time they met her. That's usually like the time you were most polite to someone. I wonder how badly they treat her if they got to know her. You did the right thing. And OP said they probably would have talked shit behind her back as well. And then someone said, why are you friends with people you assume would talk shit about your girlfriend behind her back? Or did you just not think that until the racist comments? Someone said your pr friend probably thought her comment was harmless because she was just pointing out the obvious. Share with her what you wrote above so she can see it from the perspective of token X. Make this a learning opportunity for her. And then someone else said, our race isn't a joke, but I would recommend a lot more tact when dealing with this kind of stuff. He should let her take the lead more instead of white knighting. You have to train your friends on how to deal with you. So I think his heart was in the right place and he wanted to stand up for his girlfriend. He didn't want his friends to be assholes. I, I totally get that. I personally definitely would have handled it differently. I would have never let it slide. I would have checked in on my girlfriend and I would have been, there's a really easy way to be like, hey, don't make race jokes. And like, kind of just like, put it into it right there. Or you could take your friends aside and be like, hey, uh, I don't know what you meant by that, but like, I'd rather if you hang out with my girlfriend, not insult her like that. Like just kind of, you don't need to blow up because when people blow up, I feel the point is lost. 
if you calmly discuss things, I think that uh, that gets things handled better. I love that you wanted to help her and that you're anti-racist. Again, all for that. And I definitely think it's something you should check in with your girlfriend and be like, hey, uh, were you okay with that? If not, please let me know. And if you were, uh, just let me know if it ever changes. And that, that can be it. I think your intentions were not the asshole. Maybe how you handled it was a little, I don't know the word, uh, just like uncomfortable for your girlfriend. Like you're trying to defend your girlfriend and her feelings, but that's not how she wanted them handled. And she should be able to say how you defend her on her behalf. Does that make sense? Because if she's shy and introverted, blowing up and making a scene is going to make her hate everything. So a more tactful approach, like that person said, I think is the way to handle just because of who your girlfriend is. Yeah, that's all. Also, you should talk to your friends and calmly so they can maybe hear how those those little jokes actually hurt. All right, moving on to the next one. Am I the asshole for refusing to help my friend clean up after Sunday lunch? I don't know. Did you make the mess? If you made the mess, help clean it up. Here we go. I, a 19-year-old female, usually go with my parents and my brother to my grandparents' house on Sunday for lunch, along with other members of my family, an aunt, two uncles, two female cousins, and a male cousin. Since I was little, things have always been the same. My grandfather cooks because my grandmother is in a wheelchair and cannot help him. We arrive and eat, and then the women clean up. Okay. I always hated this because the moment we were done eating, my aunt stands up and goes, girls, come and help us. So while we take away the dishes and wash them, the men just sit there and talk. Ooh. Oh, okay. This one's going to make me angry. Um, they don't even make the effort of putting their fork and knife inside the plate when they're done eating. They just sit and wait for us to take it away like we are their servants. Mm-mm, mm-mm, the way I would not. The way I would not. I help every time without saying anything because I don't want to cause a scene, even if it makes me really angry. Last week, I wrote a message in the family chat saying that on Sunday, the men were going to help clean because they never do. And my female cousins and my kin backed me up. But on Sunday, when we were done eating, just the women got up as usual, and my aunt called only for the girls to help. I felt so angry, I just went to sit on the couch and declared that I was not going to move a finger until the men did. Okay, so I have to say, one, you tried to handle this in a non-confrontational matter. You wrote a letter, not in the scene, like not at the moment. You're just like, hey, by the way, I'm kind of sick of this. So I think you started doing the mature thing. And then you had to take a stance. Okay, here we go. Obviously, nobody did anything and I was furious. That evening, I got a call from my cousin, a 29-year-old female, saying that I was rude for not... <laughs> okay. That I was rude for refusing to help and leave them to do all the work. So I said that she never told this to her dad or any of the male cousins and hung up. Now I'm thinking I might have gotten too angry and overreacted. Am I the asshole? Um, I think you should be... Well, one, I think that cousin should have never help, called you. And I think you need to ex direct your anger towards the men. I don't think you were an asshole. I think you tried to handle it maturely and everyone ignored you because the men aren't going to fucking stand up. They're, ex they're excited to not have to put any work in and they get served. And the women are just doing what they've been taught to do. Um, someone said, not the asshole. Of course, the cleaning up needs to happen. And it's not fair for your grandfather who cooked the meal to be left with an unclean kitchen, but it's not women's work. And it bugs me to no end when women perpetuate sexist BS like this. Talk to your grandfather and grandmother. Explain to them. See what they say. They need to set the tone here. If you persist in eating their food without cleaning up, you will be TA to prepare to not come to family meals or volunteer other help around the house while you're there. But you are absolutely not the asshole for wanting a non-gendered non division of labor. And then someone said, I actually think the agent of change here is the male cousins. Can they be shamed into realizing what they're contributing to? Ideally, would they stand up and say, nope, the guys have it this time. Please sit down, ladies. But just participating equally in the cleanup would be a huge improvement. I would talk to them individually and lay out how regressive and ridiculous this is. You can tell them that someday they'll want to bring, pardon, assuming heterosexuality for the moment, a girlfriend to dinner. And those girlfriends are going to be horrified and run if they observe, observe the current situation. Um, 
everyone's saying not the out asshole, the outdated views on things. Yeah, everyone's saying not the asshole, not the asshole, not the asshole. They ate, they clean. Yeah, my, our rule, it's not really a rule. It's just like kind of what we, we do when Abby cooks, I clean, unless I don't have time. And then I tell her that. I'm like, hey, babe, you can leave the dishes. I, I really have to get back to work. And she's like, no, I'll just get them. You're busy, go. And then they, I guess it's because we don't have a gendered household here. Like, well, we have genders, but there's no like man or woman type of thing. But we have a rule of whoever cooks doesn't have to clean. And we pretty much, it doesn't, we don't always follow that because things happen in life. Someone's tired. Someone has something to do. There's a million different things. But our rule is, if you cooked everyone food, you don't have to clean. If you cooked just yourself food, then you have to clean up your mess. And I think that's pretty simple. But then there's people that go above and beyond, like Dylan and Joy made us dinner one night, and then us girls were all talking, and Dylan just got up, cleared the table, and did the dishes, because he's a really nice guy. And we were all so thankful for him. So I believe your grandpa doesn't have to do the cleaning, because he made the meal. Your, mo- your grandma shouldn't have to do it because she's in a wheelchair. So that leaves everybody else, <laughs> regardless of gender. Now, it's good on you for trying to handle this maturely, writing a letter before the dinner even happened, you know, letting people know where you stand before it got ugly. I, I think you did the right thing. Um, it just sucks that no one was willing to fall through with it. <sighs> All right. We have time for one more, but let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Manscaped, Manscaped is our sponsor for today. Hey there, ladies. The holidays are sneaking up on you faster than your fourth cup of iced coffee, and you're still debating what to get the man in your life. Well, I've got the perfect gift for you. Forget the cliche gifts like socks or ugly sweaters or a tie that they hate. Get them something that they'll actually love and use. The Chairman Pro Package from Manscaped. It's like the Rudolph of grooming, guiding him to the smoothest, irritation-free shave of his life. Trust me, he'll look so good, you'll be taking all the credit at every holiday holiday party, which you probably already do. Head over to manscaped.com and join the over 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by using the promo code RU for 20% off plus free shipping. That's RU, the letter R and U. And the Chairman Pro has not one, but two interchangeable skin safe blade heads. Keep them looking sharp while minimizing razor burn and irritation because no one wants to show up to a holiday party looking like they lost a fight with the Christmas tree. But wait, there's more. The Chairman Pro has flex adjust technology, which is basically like the holiday miracle of his grooming routine. The Chairman Pro is also waterproof, which means he can use it in the shower and it simplifies cleanup too. You just do a quick rinse under the sink and he's all set. It isn't just for daily shaves either. It is powerful enough to tackle up to a five-day growth of stubble. And the package also includes a power shave gel. It's a non-irritating, lubricating formula made specifically to work with the Chairman Pro for a smooth and comfortable shave. So gift your man the ultimate grooming experience by Manscaped and get him the Chairman Pro package for the holidays. It's a thoughtful and practical gift that he'll actually use and love. Again, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code RU at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code RU, the letter R and the letter U at manscaped.com. Okie dokie, last one. Am I the asshole for not coming home during the day to let my 23-year-old female boyfriends... Oh, sorry. The writer, the OP is a 23-year-old female. Is she an asshole for not coming home during the day to let out her boyfriend's dog, her boyfriend is a 26-year-old male, while she is trying to finish her thesis? Okay. My boyfriend of 3.5 years and I have been living together for 1.5 years now in an apartment with one other roommate. My boyfriend got a dog, a five-year-old male, around the time that we met. And I love him. I take care of the dog every morning because my boyfriend doesn't wake up early enough. But we both leave the day for the day around 7.30 a.m. Okay, so you've started taking on the responsibility of this dog. That's fine. You're cool with it, it seems like. I'm in my third semester of my master's program. Get some, girl. You get that knowledge. And my advisor expects a first draft of my thesis in three weeks so I can graduate on time in May. 
I work best in my office where I have a second monitor and a space to spread out research materials. I also have ADHD and take medication, so I'm most productive in long, uninterrupted blocks of time before evening hours. Girl, I get you. Hi, Blaze. What's up, buddy? Previously, I could stay home late or come home early from school to help with the dog. My boyfriend's old job was only 15 minutes away from the apartment, so he would come home for lunch, and sometimes a roommate let the dog out at 3 p.m., But since October, my boyfriend started a new job 30 minutes away, and I'm now pulling 12-hour days with classes, teaching, grading, and my thesis. This has led to some arguments about the dog's care. Okay, so before everything was really easy, then both their lives shifted, so they both have less time and they're farther away from the dog. Got it. This led to an argument about the dog's care. For example, today, I plan to work on my thesis all day in my office since I have no meetings, labs, or classes. However, as I was leaving, my boyfriend told me that I needed to come home at least once during the day to let the dog out. I reminded him that it takes me 30 minutes to commute each way, 15 to 20 minutes of walking to my car, plus a 10 minute drive, and that I work best with uninterrupted blocks of time. He accused me of deliberately avoiding responsibility and said I should help because I have no other obligations. I told him that I am happy to take care of the dog when I can but that he shouldn't expect me to take care of him more than I actually can. Oh, there's more, but mm -mm, not your dog. Not your responsibility. Abby never expects me to take care of her dog. I never expect her to take care of my dogs. And then Misa's our shared dog, so we both accept the responsibility of that one. But we came into this relationship. I had my two pitties. She had her little mini golden doodle. And we always help each other out, but never expect it. Like. She'll ask me, she's like, oh, can you take, can you take her to a grooming appointment if you can? It's always if you can. I'd be like, can you let the boys out if you can? It's never, hey, you have to let the boys out at this blah, 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 blah. And I realize my dogs require a lot more. They're bigger. They have more energy. They're stronger. They're not the, the best out in the world. So um, I have hired a dog walker and he, she comes twice a week and I got them associated with her. So whenever we are out of the house, if we have to go to LA for the day, if we have to go to town for a night, I have someone that I can call on to come take care of the dogs because they are my responsibility. When we go out of town for a long time, Abby has to find people to take care of her dog. I have to find someone to take care of my boys. And then we share Miso and Stevie as a responsibility. But oh my God, Blaze, really? You just had to go between the small little crook in my leg? So... For him to say, you have to come home to take care of his dog? No. I also take care of Abby's dog in the morning because I'm up earlier than her and I'm already doing my thing. I don't mind it. And, but if I said, I don't want to take care of your dog in the morning, she'd be like, okay, don't. That's not your responsibility. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to keep reading. I already take the dog out every morning around 7.15 a.m., but that leaves a long gap until our roommate comes home at 3 p.m. While I feel bad about that, I cannot afford delays in my thesis timeline. If I do not graduate on time, we'll have to renew our lease and might end up paying for two leases if I can't find a job in this city. I've been searching for months and there isn't many options in my field here. I've talked to him about paying for a dog walker or paying our roommate to take him out every day, but he is strongly against those ideas although he just got a raise. Okay, he's just being a dick. Sorry, you have a responsibility. You need to deal with it. Dogs cost money. Animals cost money. This is just something you have to do. I think he sees this as a test of my commitment to this relationship, though we've both said we want to get married. No, he's not testing anything. Well, he is testing something. He's testing to see how much he can get from you. This is not your responsibility. By him saying, like, fuck you and your thesis, come home and take care of my dog, it's showing how little respect he has for your work and how you function as a human. No. You're already taking his dog out in the morning because he wants to sweep away to Wonga. Oh, he needs his little beauty sleep. No, fuck that. The icing on the cake is that I've always wanted a cat, and my plans have always been to get one after I graduate. However, he said that I can't get one. He expects me to take the time out of my studies to take care of his dog, but won't let me get my own furry friend. So, am I the asshole for refusing to come home during the day to take care of his dog while I finish my thesis? No, 
A thousand percent no. Not even a little bit. It's ridiculous to even consider that you're the asshole in this situation. I want to throw a rock at your boyfriend's face. I will read the first comment. Not the asshole. You're absolutely not in the wrong here. It's his dog. And while it's great that you've been helping out by taking him out every morning, the bulk of the responsibility should fall on your boyfriend, not you. Especially when you're in the middle of something as intense and time sensitive as finishing your thesis. You've already offered reasonable solutions like hiring a dog walker or asking your roommate to help out, but your boyfriend is rejecting them for no good reason. The fact that he's rejecting those options despite having the means to afford them shows he's prioritizing his pride or an unnecessary test of your relationship over your success and well-being. That's unfair to you and honestly unfair to the dog too. If he can't manage to come home or make alternative arrangements, he needs to reconsider his priorities. What makes this hypocritical is the double standard with the cat. He expects you to sacrifice your time and energy for his pet, but he is unwilling to compromise on something you want in the future. That's not a fair balance in your partnership. You're working toward a major milestone that will benefit both of you long term. He should be supporting you during this time, not making you feel guilty for focusing on something so important. You are already doing a lot. Don't let him make you feel like it's not enough. Preach. Bars. Let's go. Not the asshole. I can only imagine how bad he will be once they start having kids. Yes. Yes. Stop it. Get out. Tell him, shut the fuck up or leave. Because no, not a chance. Uh, Not the asshole. His statement that you have, quote unquote, no other obligations is untrue. You have a an obligation towards your education and graduation that is essential and fundamental for your future. God, that made me angry. That one made me, no. The other ones, I get it. They could have been fake, whatever. Like, I understand maybe just the way you went about it wrong or it's just like a social etiquette thing. But this, fuck that. That's all. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for today. I hope you were entertained. I was. Uh, Blaze, thanks for being here. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, Next week, I think we're going to have a, what is it, a Thanksgiving episode? So, guys, down below, if you're watching this on YouTube, ask me some Thanksgiving things or anything. I really don't care. But what do you want to see for a Thanksgiving episode? Should I, I could try and cook a Thanksgiving meal. I could, I don't know what I could do. Let's figure it out together. I want to do something special. Let me know down below. I love you all. And I will see you next time. And don't forget to check out my sisters and my podcast, Sweet and Salty Sisters, over on our Patreon account. I love you all. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!